Here we are, another Facebook, sorry, Friday Night Live. <laughs> We're on uh, Friday time, not Wednesday. And uh, today is what? First day of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. First day of winter in the Southern. Beautiful day. Yesterday was the summer solstice. The longest day of the year is, uh, what is it, yesterday or today? Today is a full moon. And uh, lots of energy is happening. Um, yeah. I buried my uh, eldest cousin today. 67 years young. It's a... Uh, Never something easy to do. This is all part of life. This is all part of life. And, you know, the journey continues. The journey continues. We're burying uh, so many people in the last uh, few years. And... It doesn't look like anything is going to change anytime soon. Um, unless people choose to embrace the art of subtraction and change their lifestyle, right? Move into the direction of peace, balance, correct conduct. Move into the direction of the divine creator. This is what the art of subtraction is all about. It's all about peace, balance, correct conduct. That's how the divine plan works, as far as I'm concerned. Everything outside of that is we're moving in uh, dissonance according to creation itself and divine creator. And um, sad but true in, in the eyes of in, in the eyes of this body of what I've been seeing. The last four years has been going absolutely cuckoo everywhere. Crime rates have skyrocketed. People dropping dead like never before at all ages. Heart attack victims are all ages. Uh, diseases never heard of before at all ages. And, um, it's just uh, sad. But here we are in this little realm of NFS with... Uh, Master fast, master key. Anybody want to use that master key to change their lifestyle? It's available. Doesn't matter what what condition people are in. If if we are still breathing, there's that chance that we can recover. As long as we're breathing. There's a chance we can recover. Doesn't matter what diagnosis the system gave you or gave us. Let it go. Give it back to them. Don't embrace that diagnosis. Don't embrace those fictitious names. Whatever it is, let it go. Send it back. Give it back. Delete it from your memory. Delete Delete, delete. I am not allowing this into my consciousness realm. Delete. I don't want my mind to be programmed with this caca. Delete, delete, delete. You can just keep doing that over and over your mind. If you want, write it down. Burn it outside. Send it back to the earth to recycle. Many ways to release these uh, these things. Um, we're being bombarded left, right, and center, up, down, around, right, the negative things, right, the poison, the air, the water, the food, the frequencies, and uh, who knows what else? You know, cell phones, towers, and these frequencies. It's. Um, it's interesting. 
very interesting. So, is there anybody out there? Anybody got any questions? Or we can uh, call it a short night and uh, go back to what I was doing. Marco, is that you? We, well, you, you know, it doesn't matter what state people are in. They believe the whole, wholeheartedly the white jackets. They don't question them or anything. I've I've talked about this before. I was going in and out of the hospital with my father. And um, you know, you have to support people what they want to do, right? And pharmacist prescribes all the medication, whatever you want to call it, a list of stuff. So I start asking questions to the pharmacists, the head pharmacists of the hospital. What's this for? What are side effects? What's this for? What's the side effects? And I go, which ones are the one that you feel is absolutely necessary in this state right now? Because that's what people choose to do. So and it came down to from ten to I can't remember two or three. And then uh, she goes, I wish everybody would ask questions like you. I go, what do you mean? Doesn't anybody ask you questions? She said, nobody. I go, you're joking. She goes, no, nobody asks questions. So think about this. You have a pharmacist working in a hospital. They probably go through thousands of people every year and nobody asks questions. They do and take whatever they are told. This is what we call mind control indoctrination. This is what the whole system is revolved around. And we can see the outcome in the last four years, like never before, of um, what mind control can achieve. Put people in fear for 30 to 60 days, keep them in a constant state of fear, and they will do anything for you. They will do anything, and we've seen that. So, um, how come, you know, a few of us can see it for what it is. Well, when you live a fasting lifestyle, all the answers are in plain sight and all the lies are in plain sight, right? So we can see the lies for what they are. Lies, and that's what they are. You know, in my opinion, everything that we've been taught, pretty much, is a lie. Some things have some pieces of little truths mixed in there so that people will... Um, make it happen, make it happen, make it believable or whatever. I don't know. Um, you know, looking back way back before I woke up, you know, I started, I believe all that cut up from the uh, white jacket. So that didn't take long for me to snap out of that. You know, I started asking questions as a young teenager about that system. And uh, I never had proper answers and I kept questioning, questioning, questioning that and meant everything else. <laughs> And woke up uh, with the Arnold Laird book. I just, I, I opened up into a whole different realm. I said, wow, this is awesome. I'm leaving that system and I'm going to nature. The divine create, the, the, what the divine creator created for us, I'm going to that system. And uh, I never looked back pretty much for all those years since 1990. And here we are in 2024. Yeah, that, uh, 
34 years later, right? Gonna start the 35th year soon. And a lot of things have been uh, learned in the past 35 years, a lot of experiences we've got we've gone through. My goodness, how many different experiences. You know, almost killing myself and so on and so forth. And you know, feeling amazing to feeling horrific, to feeling like you're dying, to you're almost dying. Oh, pain, misery, and suffering for years. And oh yeah, it's just amazing, amazing lessons. Um and uh, some of us want to remain in, in, in those lessons, right? Get misery, pain, and suffering. It's just, it's just, that's what some people want to do. Then we, if we are not willing to change everything to make the changes, to live, be able to live a different uh, lifestyle full of energy, joy, and laughter, excitement, uh, you know, uh, we're going to go in the opposite direction. And you know, right now we have the uh, uh, the stuff that's being pushed out there is complete opposite to what we're um, sharing and supporting in the MFS realm through the art of subtraction. It's complete opposite. It's the addition system. The whole addition system is what the majority of people are into. You need this vitamin, this mineral. This amino acid, this fat, they're all essential. You can't get it from anywhere else. Bull crap. Oh, bull crap. Um, and you, need, you, can get, you can only get it from animal products. Where do the animals get it from? Where do the plants get? How do the plants produce oils and fats? How do they how does it do it? If the other species from the same creator, right, create these things. And we can't do it. No, we need we need to buy the things that these marketers are dictating to us, right? Brainwashing, indoctrinating us to believe that we need. Well, what we found in the MFS realm is the opposite, right? The art of subtraction. You move everything and your body starts to make everything. You don't need any of that stuff. And it's been a blessing, you know, you've heard. The water wake up <laughs> when I you know being a water wizard man <laughs> you know doing so much research for so many years about water and then discovery being enlightened that wait a minute we don't need to drink water water dehydrates what water will make you more thirsty what this is the information that started coming through. And I was starting to experience, you know, with starting all the dry fast and so on and so forth. Because so the MFS realm, the mass, the uh, glorified dry fast. So as we're, you know, experiencing many dry fasts and we're seeing how the body reacts, every dry fast become more hydrated. This is not what we've been taught. We've been taught to carry a bottle of water. <laughs> or we're going to dehydrate. We're going to die in three days. So it's a joke. You know, it's out there and it's all propaganda. It's all marketing. It's all for people to make money. And that's why um, it is what it is. Uh, we can see it for what it is. And we can hope, we hope that more people start seeing for it for what it is. Um, you know, there's every day we're hearing something new, of something you need to add into your lifestyle, into your body to be able to be healthy. Magnesium, it's a magnesium month, a magnesium year. Selenium, it's the selenium month or selenium year. <laughs> you know, silver, oh, silver, you know, you need the silver. It's, it's, it's always always something to add right and you know there's many of the tools that we can use right we use some of them some of the isolates the baking soda um 
uh, you know, silver, silver could be used. I wouldn't rely on silver. I mean, you know, um, what do you call it? Colloidal silver. Um, uh, chlorine dioxide, you know, it's a wonderful tool. I wouldn't rely on these tools and it's a wonderful tool to have with you in your arsenal, especially if you're traveling and stuff. Yeah. It's, um, you know, you want to carry around a miracle herb, carry around cayenne powder, carry around cayenne tincture. I have a cayenne tincture in my car. There's somebody having a heart attack and save their life. You know, even the powder, powder, the tincture reacts um, and it gets absorbed way quicker. Right? The squirt under the tongue, if the guy's having a heart attack, and they will be pissed off <laughs> when they wake up <laughs> because of the burning, but they will thank you after they get over the burning cessation. You know, you don't need extremely, really extremely hot stuff. 40,000 heat units is enough for 90,000. If you want to go a bit hotter, that's, I, I usually get the 90,000. And uh, I also get the 180,000. So I'm, I'm a fire guy. I like the hot heat. And I kind of mix them. So I'm in between there somewhere. And uh, it's nice, you know, because you don't need to use a lot. But that's, it's uh, for beginners, it's, it's you know, 180 is too much. Uh, 90 may be too much for some. Unless you start with a very small amount. Um, we have uh, people want those tinctures made. Just uh, uh, we have them available. You just choose one of the, any tincture that we have on the list. It's not on the list. Like we can make uh, single tinctures for people, and we have made them, and we do make them. So if you wanted a cayenne, you put something, you know, duplicate order or something, and so you just in the notes replace this uh, kidney one with uh, solo cayenne uh, herbal tincture, and uh, we can do that. Um, you know, there's some some herbs that are very expensive, like I mean, very expensive, and some are in the formulas. So if it's one of those really expensive herbs, it will not be the same price because there's a few formulas that are very expensive for us to make. Um, Richard, what does it can do besides helping heart attacks? Oh, it stops bleeding if you have an external or internal bleeding. If you have a cut, you can put cayenne powder right on top of it and you can take some internally so it helps coagulate. It opens up the vascular system, and uh, you mix cayenne with any other herb. It um, uh, uh, makes the other herbs work better, more powerfully. The synergy between cayenne and anything else is amazing. You know, but um, as with anything, if we're doing it all the time, it begins to be used as a food. So whenever, if we're, if we're using cayenne in our foods, we don't want to be using it all the time. We want to take breaks from any herbs that we're using regularly. We always want to take breaks. But cayenne is wonderful. You can, uh, for, you know, if you're eating cooked food um, in the morning, small glass of water, little bit of cayenne powder or tincture with lemon. First thing you drink, forget about coffee. You want to wake up and have energy? Coffee gives you that boost of stimulated energy and then you crash. And you don't get any of that with cayenne. It just opens everything up and away you go, you know. So cayenne, look it up. It's a uh, one of uh, super herbs. <laughs> it's one of the super herbs. <laughs> the cayenne pepper. Okay. It's not any hot peppers, the cayenne, specifically the cayenne. I think they, they may all have similar properties, um, but the cayenne specifically is what the one we're talking about, right? Not uh, all the, the categories of hot peppers. Like these days, they're. They've been uh, 
manipulating, crossbreeding, and producing these crazy high, high heat peppers that well, <laughs> make a, a bear freak out. So we got we got to be careful with this stuff. You know, it's, it's too hot. To, you know, we don't need we don't need the extreme heat. You know. 20,000, if you find 20,000, the lowest we have is 40, and that one there is not very popular. Most people go for the, uh, and we don't have the 40 all the time. Most people go for the 90,000, and you use less of it, that's all. It's, um, it brings excitement into uh, the foods and into your morning drink. But like I said, anybody who's eating cooked food needs to drink a little bit of water. You know, even, you know, the one glass a day would be sufficient unless you're eating 100% cooked. Uh, then you're going to be drinking more water because uh, you need to dilute all the obstructions. That's that's what that's why we get dehydrated, right? Eating and, and uh, makes you more hungry, makes you more thirsty, and then drinking more makes you more thirsty. So, but because if we're putting that stuff in our bodies, we're going to have to dilute it and. Um, that's what we see. This is where um, you see people, you know, getting themselves in trouble, pushing their dry fast like they're superheroes and uh, been living a very obstructive lifestyle, completely dehydrated and malnourished from eating so much because that's what happens. <laughs> malnourished and dehydrated. Eat and drink, we get malnourished and, and dehydrated. Don't believe it, it's okay. You don't have to believe it. Believe whatever you want. We all have free will to choose. I believe eating makes you hungry and brings uh, nutritional deficiencies because it's obstructive and water dehydrates us. You know, and also the eating makes us thirsty, makes us you know dehydrated. And not only makes us hungry and uh, makes us dehydrated because more obstructions we have the more dehydrated we are. The um, the cleansing of the bowels is utmost important. You know, people that have edema, you know, extra colon wash and the edema starts going down. And you go, wait a minute, I'm putting all this water going through my colon and my edema is going down. Why is that? Common sense of logic, right? You're removing obstructions. You're helping the body remove obstructions that are causing um, uh, energy blockages. That, you know, energy can't flow and things don't function properly. Kidneys, et cetera, et cetera. If your bowels are all plugged up, your kidneys are plugged up. Your liver is plugged up. Your pancreas is plugged up. Your lungs are plugged up. Everything, everything, every organ plan is plugged up with thyroid, your brain, your eyesight, you know, your eyes, everything, everything will be plugged up because we are uh, a, a living being and everything works synergistically together. You know, there's, oh, yeah, you got a heart failure, let's change the heart. Okay, what about the rest of the body? What about the rest of the body? What about the emotions that allow that heart to get into that state? See, this is where the mainstream medicine is absolutely diabolical. And um, uh, could they save a life? Yeah, they can. But um, what happens after? They, some people are second or third, you know, transplants. Absolutely diabolical. Like when you hear stuff like that, how did somebody even survive? multiple tra transplants because the trauma from those massive operations on the physicality, the drugs they give us, the knock us out, they're so powerful, so powerful. And um, there's people walking, like I said, they walk into these places, they don't question anything, or lie down and have anything done to them and anything given to them, they'll take, no questions. This is the, 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 the state we are in, in the masses around the globe. 
Um, there may be pockets and areas where you know people are living in jungles and stuff, and still today, and they're not exposed to modern society. And we can probably count that out. But uh, they're, they're doing strange things too in some of these places. <laughs> but it's not uh, uh, as strange as what we're doing, you know, playing with chemistry and believing we have the answers on how the body works with chemistry, which we don't. Whatever they tell you, it's a lie. <laughs> Whenever you look at, I was into this chemistry, the alkaline acid thing, and trying to get my health in order with that stuff. Good luck. Good luck. And people that are selling this stuff Lucifer, have the Luciferic intellect, gift of the gab. And it sounds like, yes, this is the way. And then you go and experience it, and it's not the way. And it's not, you know, what they tell you. <laughs> Art of subtraction takes care of everything from A to Z. Everything. Physical, mental, emotional. You just have to make the choice to live in these states on a regular basis. Right? Not continual. On a regular basis. Make the commitment to be regular in, uh, in what you're doing. Uh, Richard, how are you doing? I uh, haven't heard from you in a while. Have you made any posts? I haven't, haven't seen anything come up. Uh, you know, the, the healing it, it takes, the time it takes, and we embrace it, keep going. We keep going. We don't back down. We can take breaks. Yeah, we can take breaks. But we keep going, no matter what, no matter how long it takes. Because we know, we know, that we have a choice destiny that we are moving towards, right? Moving towards balance, the divine creator. We're moving in that direction, which is an ongoing journey. It's not a destination. Sorry. I fell off the diet a couple of months ago, started again today. Or should I say off MFS? Okay, yeah, it happens. Um, you feel better or worse when you're off it. You post about it. All right, great. <clears throat> it's um, it's a learning experience. We have to we make the choice to take control of our emotions in these situations. You know, worse, of course. And uh, when we fall off, we pay attention to what we're doing and how we feel. Pay attention. Be aware so that we don't stay off the wagon, on the ground, being kicked over and over again. We don't want to be there. We want to be able to get up, brush ourselves off, and get back on the wagon, moving in the direction of balance. Right? That's what it's all about. Recognizing that our emotions are overtaking uh, our common sense and logic and destroyed our our way, our path. <laughs> so we want to we want to shake that off and get back on the wagon, right? We don't want to be down on the ground being kicked over and over and over. And what does that mean? Well, when you fall off the wagon, you start eating anything and everything and feel like crap. And it just makes the situation worse. And that's where people hurt themselves because um, when you're doing a lot of dry fasting, you don't want to be eating obstructive. Very, very... Unwise. Then wise. You can hurt yourself badly. You can kill yourself. Whatever. Um, we want to be on our path. You know, if we are choosing to eat some obstructive foods, there's foods we can choose that are a lot less obstructive than the highly, highly obstructive stuff. You know, for example, if you're getting off a fast and guzzling high oil, high, uh, high amounts of oils and high fats, you know, picking out an avocado is weird. Uh, what's, the, what's that name, the fellow's name? He had, uh, was it a gallbladder issue? 
I think he did 108 days and he also had some virus thing that they say can't leave your body. He got rid of that. And uh, then he broke his fast uh, with, uh, and he puts, I can't remember how many days, uh, avocados. Rushed into emergency, they removed his gallbladder. So, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I laugh, you know, when people think that we're a diesel engine to run on oils and fats. You know. That's, uh, I, I fell into that trap and I almost killed myself. My friend dropped dead and many others have dropped dead from high fat diets. Uh, believe it or not. Um, people believe oils are food. And it's just, I can't wrap my head around it. I don't care that there's some societies that have been using oils for thousands of years. I don't care because oils are not foods. These are things that man created by squeezing um, the seeds out of plants, right? Even olive oil comes from the seed of the, of the fruit. It doesn't come from the fruit. The oils come from the seeds. They're all seed oils from the plants. All, pretty probably all plant oils have some kind of, all, all, all plants, seeds have some kind of oils. The seeds is where the oils are contained. So that oil is where the soul is contained in the physicality. And that is a protector to some degree, right? Because it's very obstructive and collagulating. So it protects the soul in the physical realm to be able to be planted and sprout out and grow. It's amazing stuff. So what do we do? We well, you know better. So we squeeze and let all that oil pour out destroy all those souls that could have been life. And uh, we chug along and say this is the best thing because it's highly stimulating, highly addictive, highly stimulate, highly addictive. And we justify eating these things because it's always been done for millennia. So that mean, makes it right. Not in my book. I fell in that trap. And... Um, that's probably one of the worst things you can do, breaking a fast, is going to the oils or any high fats. Worst thing you can do, especially people doing level sevens for extended periods of times. How do we know? Because it's happened. You know, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be experiencing that because you may not survive it. These things, they create life if they, we leave it within the seed and we break the seed, we destroy it. We destroy life, destroying the seed, we destroy life. And then we use what came out of it, the oils, to destroy life. Destroy, destroy, cause and effect, same to same, whatever you want to call it basic logic and common sense we're, we're destroying and there's a repercussion of destruction from what we did <clears throat> or what somebody did for us they're squeezing the oils for us you know just like killing the animals for us how many people go out and actually kill their own animals right for meat very few of us especially if we're living You see, <clears throat> especially if we live in the cities, you're not going to have animals to uh, slaughter. You're going to buy it, right? So somebody's doing it for us. So in this realm, you know, we have a master fast food spiral, sort of master fast food spiral. You know, it keeps going out or out or out, wider and wider. And, you know, in the center is this nothingness of the divine creator, all knowledge, and there's no physicality. It's pure soul essence, and we can tap into that. And believe you me, there's limitless energy sources in that vortex of the divine creator. <laughs> and then we start moving upwards in the material world, 
you know, you know, water and stuff like that, and you know, sorry, air, water, you know, fruit juices, fruit, and we go out, and as we go move out to the vegetable, green leafy vegetables, uh, herbs, green leafy vegetables, and then the, the, the herd of vegetables, you know, and sweet root vegetables, and then we keep going out, you know, heavier stuff, uh, uh, we will be like legumes, you know, which is a seed. <laughs> it's got high proteins and uh, legumes must have some fat. As we move out, we also you have the uh, gra the grains, grains and legumes. And probably I don't know which one is more obstructive. It depends. That those two, it's a bit difficult. Some people are more sensitive to the inflammation caused by grains. And some people can handle the protein a little better, and some the other way around. They can handle grains a little better, and they can't handle the protein. But they're both obstructive, high on the obstructive scale, right? So if we do those, we got to do them very occasionally with prudence, you know. We still have legumes very occasionally, and boy, I can feel my kidneys the next day, especially if I overdo it with uh, legumes. You know, chickpeas or whatever, chickpeas and uh, lentils, they're a little bit easier than uh, some of the other beans. Um, the black beans, um, if if you cook them, you're, if you do it right, um, you'll have much less effect. And what do I mean by doing it right? We're going to talk about cooking now, but this is something you do you know, once or twice a year. If you're into that, if not, if you're not eating any cooked foods, that's the best. Stay on fruit. Fruits is our staple. So um, you would soak your beans, the legumes, whatever you want to call them, in uh, purified water, you know, good good sorts of water. Uh, I put a little bit of uh, baking soda, a little bit of sea salt. And let it sit 24 hours. In those 24 hours, we also ozonate. <laughs> In those 24 hours, we change the water, you know, two, three times. And then, you know, you change it just before you cook it, right? And when you ozonate, you'll see gunk come out a lot of these, like all kinds of gunk. And then you slow cook them over hours and they cook much quicker this way because they've been soaked. And um, that is the best way. If you have a pressure cooker, um, I, I I don't have one, so I don't know, but uh, I've read that pressure cooking is an even better way to cook uh, legumes and beans. So if we're doing uh Level four or five and up, you, you won't be able to do, you won't be able to eat like legumes. You're going to, uh, you're going to pay the price. You're going to pay the price with proteins. And what does everybody say we need? Proteins. We need, you know, you got to have protein. Where do you see protein deficiency? Do you see that anywhere? You know, this is the... And a friend of mine was just in the hospital and said, we got to eat more protein. So they're, still, they're still saying these things. He's got to eat more protein. That's what causes all his problems. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they want to put you on. It's a joke. Anyway, any questions before we sign off? Um... Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long day. Bear with my cousin, I said earlier, and it's tough. Tough. I'm gonna miss those conversations that we've had every every now and again over the years. And, you know, growing up. And, ah, yeah. We're all gonna move into the uh. uh the realm of the fields one day. So uh, send plaf to all those who've crossed the other side. Let's send plaf to all the ones being slaughtered for no reason. Let's let, send plaf to all the people 
demon, dem demonic war pig, psychopath killers, let's send them the most blast that they may wake up from their from diabolical actions. And uh, let's hope that uh, we can see peace in our lifetime in this world, because that's what I'm here to live for, peace, balance, correct conduct. I mean, Ciao. We'll see you back on the page um, Wednesday Facebook Live. But I believe I'll be around. I'll let you know if I'm not. Ciao. Bye.